Hi guys, Tom here from Green Engine Recording. Today I want to talk to you about how to make sure your band sounds great wherever you're playing any night of the week. Playing to a room packed full of people is a great experience, but it can be stressful playing a new venue and working with a sound engineer who's never heard your music before. How can you put on a great show if you can't hear yourselves properly on stage? You have the opportunity to win over a whole new group of fans, but are they going to be able to hear the nuances in your music properly, or is it just going to sound like a garbled mess of sound? Wouldn't it be great if you could take a lot of the guesswork out, and almost guarantee it's going to sound great every night? What if I told you you can, you don't need to buy any extra equipment, and it's easy to do? Over the past 20 years I've worked with thousands of bands at different venues all over the world. And some bands just sound great as soon as you throw up the faders, and are really easy to mix. At first I didn't understand why this was, but over time I figured it out, and that's what I want to share with you today. It all starts with the balance of the band. How does the band sound before you put mics in front of everything and amplify it further? If one of the guitarists has their amp turned up to 11, while the other is much quieter, the engineer is going to have to compensate for this. There have also been plenty of times where the bassist has had their amp far too loud on stage, and I've had to turn it off completely in the PA, and even then it's still too loud. Live sound is supposed to be sound reinforcement, where the engineer is amplifying what's already there, not trying to create something audible out of the mess of sound coming from stage. If everything is really loud on stage, it doesn't mean the band is going to hear themselves better. Just try turning up a guitar amp and standing behind it while your guitarist plays. All the definition is lacking, and there's a lot of low mid and low frequency information which just creates more reflections as sound bounces off the walls and stage and adds more mud to contend with. Now add two more amps, and it's impossible to make out what anyone is playing. So now you need lots of new monitors to actually understand what you're playing through this wall of noise. And again, monitors are designed to sound great when you're stood in front of them. But when every band member has one, there's a lot of undefined sound coming from the sides of them and just adding to the mess on stage. So let's start by turning down on stage. At this point, guitarists always point out that their guitar amp doesn't sound as good when it isn't cranked. But what good is a great sounding guitar amp when everyone else on stage has had to turn themselves up as well so they can hear themselves over the guitarist's amp and the audience can't make out a thing from this mess of sound coming from stage? So find your tone at a lower volume, be it by driving the preamp tubes harder with an overdrive pedal, using an attenuator between the power amp and the speaker, or using a digital guitar amp. Then we need to address the drums. Chances are your drummer is wearing earplugs, as they don't want to damage their hearing. The problem with this is that regardless of price, earplugs are much better at dampening the higher frequencies than the lower ones. This means the drummer can be unaware that they're hitting their cymbals harder than they need to and are skewing the balance of the drum kit. Symbols are also, unfortunately, in the frequency range which collides most with the detail in the vocals and the guitars, making those things harder to hear. Unlike the rest of the band, who have one instrument to play, the drummer has a tougher job of balancing their instruments by varying how hard they hit certain things. A good way to visualise a good balance for a drum kit is that the drummer should hit the hardest at the bottom of their kit and hit the lightest at the top of it. So heavy on the kick, medium on the snare and toms, and light on the cymbals. Now we can start to set our levels. A great way to check your levels is if you rig up at your rehearsal space in the same way you would for a gig, with everything in line with the drum kit. Then I'll stand on the opposite side of the room, take your earplugs out, and listen while you play. This is how the audience is going to hear you. You'll probably find that it gets too loud to hear anything clearly. But now you can easily balance the levels of the amps and the drums. This will take some time, but if you work at it, you'll find you'll be able to hear yourselves much better the quieter you manage to play. Then we come to monitoring, or as I once heard them described by a band, feedback speakers. The more experienced a band is playing live, the more they understand what they need to hear in their monitors. A surefire way of telling if a band is inexperienced is when they ask for everything in their monitors. You just don't need that. This ends up being confusing when combined with the sound from the amps and the drums. If you have a balanced starting point and you stood in front of your own amp, you don't need much in the monitor at all. So the key is to keep it minimalistic. Let's start with the singer. Seeing as they probably can't sing as loud as a guitar amp, they will need to have lots of vocals here to be able to hear themselves at all. And that's it, unless there are any other instruments on stage which don't make much sound like keyboards and acoustic guitar. And then we come to the guitarists. They might need a bit of the other guitarist if there is one, as when they're stood on one side of the stage, they probably can't hear the amp on the other side, and perhaps a little bit of vocals so they know where they are in the song. The same with the bass player. They might need to hear a little of the guitar amp that's furthest away from them, and some vocals. The drummer, who's now mastered the art of balancing their playing, won't need any of their drums in the monitor. But as they're behind all the amps, they'll need to hear the guitars and the vocals. 
so the gist of it is as little as possible, just the things that are too far away for you to be able to hear clearly. Once you've done all of this, your band will sound the best it possibly can, you've given the sound engineer an easy job, and the fans will be wowed over by your songs. A lot of these concepts will also help your band sound great in the studio, and that feeds into my next video, how to prepare for going into the studio. I hope this improves your experiences playing live. Just hit me up in the comments section if you have any questions. And happy gigging.